Hello all my JavaScript friends, this is the Virtuoid, aka Mike Smith, and this is Fun with JavaScript, our jigsaw puzzle game. So we basically have completed what I call part one, or phase one of the jigsaw puzzle, where we prove that we can actually build a jigsaw puzzle. So what's going to be next? Well, I've got five things in mind that I want to do for part number two. Now part number two is going to be starting about two, maybe three months from now, because I kind of want to concentrate on my third project of the of the year and that is my cash defense game is my little tower defense type game and uh so i'm going to kind of put this to the side and that kind of also gives me a chance to be able to figure out exactly what i want to do now i've got some ideas here there's about five things i want to do for part number two but once we get to two months or so i may sit there and say okay well i decided i'm not going to do this but i'm going to do that instead so let's just go through those five things first of all unit testing the one thing I really wanted to do with this game was do TDD, Test Driven Design. And that basically means you write a test, it fails, you design your code to, cre to, to uh, have that test to be correct. It, to, eh. You write your code to make that test pass, and then you refactor. Real simple. And from there, we can then use the unit test, or not the unit test, but the test themselves to be able to design our game. That's what I wanted to do, and I kind of started it off, but I, when I got into the graphics thing, I really had a tough time trying to get the, figuring out how those tests were to be written. And so that's one of the reasons it took a whole month to get the two pieces put together, is that because I, I did first start trying to do the testing and I just got bogged down. Now that I've actually done the graphics pieces, I have a better idea of how I want to do it. And so, for instance, with the, with the cache defense game, I am going to actually try to do TDD one more time. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the unit test and I'm going to be able to create these tests to not only test what I already have there, but also attempt to use that to flesh out any additional designs, which basically gets me to part, the second thing I want to do, and that's with the refactoring of the patterns. Now, we can take a look at the patterns right here and I'm going to zoom in on the screen and bring up the pattern. As you can tell, there's absolutely nothing in the pattern right now. If we were to bring up the cut 16 square, uh, this is basic, it, this is what extends the pattern itself. And you can tell there's a lot of things here that the factory is going to expect, like the cut method, the, uh, the, the, the where is it? There it is, the fine matching pieces method, and the merge pieces method. So once it finds all of those particular, uh, well, basically what we want to do now is we want to be able to then take our pattern and put these within the, this pattern here. Basically kind of create an abstract class. And then all of my other patterns will extend this particular class. So if I have a pattern like cut 16 squared that will, uh, it, well, if I had a whole bunch of different patterns, for example, then I could that had a common code. I could put that common code here inside pattern and everybody's going to be really happy. And that's what you're supposed to do with programming. You know, you're supposed to let, let's let's create ourselves a base class called pattern. And then from there, exp expand all of our classes to match that particular pattern. Uh, part number three is going to be an actual jigsaw puzzle. You know, cut 16 square as we have here. Uh, cuts 16 pieces and makes it into a square. So for instance, if we were to take a look at our browser, and let's just, let's just select the images. One of the things I'm doing here is I've got a new uh, design that I'm doing with my, my videos now. So instead of bringing out the entire screen, which made the code look real small, I'm now zero, zeroing in on the code itself. The problem is though, is you can't see any other windows that have to pop up. Like for instance, I've got an open dialogue on my screen right now. You can't see that. So uh, you have to trust me that I'm actually going to the image to bring up the uh, sample.jpg. So I've now clicked on open and I've done that. And uh, if I click on go, there's, you know, they're the 16 pieces. Obviously each one of them are squares at this point. Uh, I would like to, of course, create what I might call a cut 16 jigsaw pattern in which I actually make these things look just like what you would expect jigsaw puzzles to look like. And that's that's actually one of the big goals I want to do. I, I may do that first before I do anything else just for fun, see, because we're going to have to, we, basically, we still have the four vertexes for each of the four different corners, but now we may use a, we'll use Bezier curves to be able to 
get our nice pretty little jigsaws, jigsaw looking pieces cut out of each of the images and it should work exactly the same as before. Whether it will or not, I don't know, but that's one of the things that we're going to do when, when we get to part two. Uh, part number, uh, the fourth part will be actual gameplay and that gameplay uh, will be basically, you know, you'll click on, instead of, you know, I got select image, select number of pieces, select cut design and go, you'll actually end up instead to be able to sit there and say, uh, okay, I'm going to do a new game and I'm going to select from a group of different images and all of, instead of bringing up just an open dialogue, which of course you didn't see in that case, but this will bring up actual uh, pictures or actual images on a screen and you just select the image and select how many pieces, you know, how it's going to cut, the pattern you're going to cut, and then you go from there. And part five is basically going to be the, uh, along those lines. I'm actually with the jigsaw puzzle. I think this is the game that I want to do a login, log out for users. And what that will allow me to do, or what I'm going to do with it, is I'm going to write basically a factory pattern to be able to say, sit there and say, okay, I'm going to be able to allow my users to come in to register themselves to deregister themselves, to log in, and I'll keep statistics and all that kind of fun stuff, but I'll create it in such a way that if you're using AWS or Google or Microsoft's authentications um, or, or authentication systems, you can just plug those in and it will always automatically work. You don't have to worry about it. Now I'm gonna use AWS and I, I can't, I, I'm sitting here thinking, how can I show you AWS without showing you some of my personal stuff and I don't wanna do that. So. Uh, what I will do is we, we will mock a user login system on our, uh, for our system. Well, you will mock a user login system and that will allow us to be able to design a login and log out screens for users, you know, registration, forgot password, all that kind of fun stuff. And then later on, obviously we will, we will tie that in with AWS and, and I may be able, I'll have to figure out how I can show that to you. And if I can't, I will. Now, I don't do Microsoft or Google, so if you do those or roll your own, then you're on your own at that point. But uh, that's going to be part number five. So basically, we're going to, we're going to do the unit testing. We're going to do uh, pattern. We're going to do refactoring of all the patterns. Uh, we're going to create real jigsaw puzzle pieces. We're going to do actual gameplay, and we're going to do a login and logout for users. Now, like I said, it's going to be about uh, two months or so. Uh, that will give me enough time probably to finish up the uh, cache design or part one on the cash design, cash design, excuse me, part one on the cash defense game. And then at that point, we'll probably run back to this and the racing game and do those concurrently, uh, basically one step, you know, concurrently, you know, one week on this one, one week on my racing game and so on and so forth. And then eventually we'll probably throw the, the, uh, the cash defense game in there too. And then, then next year should hit. <laughs> next year should hit. Well, I already got my plans for next year, so we, we got a lot of fun stuff getting ready to come up here. Uh, so I, I really appreciate you sticking with me for this uh, last three or four months and doing this jigsaw puzzle game. Again, this is part one. We'll do part two a little bit uh, later on. And uh, thank you so very much for watching the video, and I will see you on the other side for part number two. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please click on the like button below. If you wish to keep informed about new content, click on the subscribe button. And as always, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Again, thank you very much for watching. This is the Virtuoid, aka Mike Smith. We'll see you later.